Hello and welcome back to my channel. I have got a story for you. Now this story doesn't need much of an introduction, so I'm just going to jump right into it. About two years ago, my brother and his wife, who live in Canada, had twins. Now they already had a two-year-old, so everyone knew that the transition would be kind of hard, you know, with the newborn twins and a two-year-old, etc. So, being the super awesome, amazing, and humble sister that I am, I decided to fly out to Canada and help them out for a little while. I was going to be there about two and a half months, and never having traveled by myself before, I was a nervous wreck. So I start my travel process, and I soon arrive at my first destination. I had a three hour layover in Minneapolis airport, and if anyone has ever been there, you'd know how obnoxiously huge it is. So unnecessary. I had to walk two miles from my first gate to my second gate. I know because I recorded it. I get off the plane and I realize I have another flight that I have to catch and I'm kind of stressing out. I decide to give my mother a phone call. But there is no service on my phone and there's no Wi-Fi, so I can't get a hold of anyone. So the next logical step is to scout out some Starbucks coffee because A, I'm a basic white girl and that's what we do, and B, to sort of calm my nerves, I guess. And it was delicious. Finally, I hear a voice over the overhead speaker say, which is airport talk and roughly translates to we are now boarding flight blah blah blah. So I get in line with the rest of the cattle and no sooner do I get on the plane I realize I'm sitting next to a human being who apparently doesn't realize I exist. Now my armrest is his. So the whole flight I now have to sit there like this like a freaking dinosaur. Finally I arrive at my final destination which is the Winnipeg Airport in Canada. Up until this point, the whole travel process was going pretty well. Besides the random stranger who hated my very being for no reason whatsoever, but this is where the story takes a turn and where it gets really interesting. Embrace yourself. I get off my flight and I walk to a first desk with a lady behind it who asks to see my boarding pass and my passport and everything seems fine. I go to baggage claim to get my bags. While I'm waiting for my bags to come out, I get a phone call from my brother, and he says that he's waiting for me on the other side of these double doors that I can see. A moment of relief floods over me. I just have one more desk I need to pass until I can see my brother and his wife and his kids. I get up to his desk, and again, he asks for my boarding pass, my passport, my ID. And he goes, <laughs> okay, go take a seat in that room. So I go take a seat in the room with all the other losers, and I notice that there is a desk with some sort of airport security officer or something. I'm actually not sure what he was, but I'm willing to bet you that his ego ranked higher than his job title. He calls me up, and I get my boarding pass, my passport, my ID ready for the 400th time. And this is what followed. Name, uh, Sarah Fidicaro. How long are you here for? I'm gonna be here about two and a half months, ten weeks, give or take a day or two. What is your business here? Um, I'm actually here to visit my brother. I haven't seen him in five years and I haven't met his kids. His wife just had twins and they have two of them, so I'm here to kind of help out a little bit. Are you getting paid? Well, no, I'm not, I'm not getting paid. I said I'm just here to visit my brother. Ma'am, who paid for your ticket? I paid for my ticket because now I'm 20 and I work. I have money to do so. So let me get this straight. Help me, just help me understand because I'm, I'm having a hard time here. You came all this way to visit your brother for two and a half months to babysit his kids and not get paid? Well, like I said, I haven't seen him in five years. I haven't met his kids before, and I missed them. So I decided to come over and see them, and while I'm here, help them a little bit with their kids. And is your brother picking you up from the airport? Yes, he is picking me up. Actually, see, text messages telling me that he's here waiting for me to pick me up. And at this point, this lovely human being snatches my phone out of my hands. I'm standing there like, what just happened? 
as he's going through everything he possibly can on my phone. Text, Facebook messages, Facebook profiles, see I guess if they existed. In any case, this guy was just hassling me. Eventually, about 5-10 minutes later, he just looks up and says, You can go take a seat. I'm sorry, I don't know who peed in your cereal, buddy, but you need to calm down. So instead of getting into a fight with a security officer, I decided sitting down would probably be the best idea. About 10-15 minutes later, he calls me back up to his desk. When I get up there, he says, So he's not really your brother, right? Now I guess this was kind of my fault, because I did say he was my brother, and he's technically not my brother. It's just, you know, I've known him for most of my life, and I consider him a brother, and you don't have to be blood related to consider someone your brother. And I explain that all to him. The guy picks up my phone again, and calls my brother. He asks him all the same questions he already asked me 30 times. The whole thing over and over and over again. Finally, he gets off the phone with my brother. He says, okay man, you're free to go. I'm like, okay. Obviously, like, I don't want to get arrested or, you know, deported, but I'm confused why all of a sudden I'm free to go. Like, that's it? Really? So I go over to my bags, I pick up my bags, and he says, I'll walk you out. Apparently he thought I was going to run away. Where am I going to go? So he walks me out to my brother. When we get out there, again, he starts asking all of the same questions. Finally, it gets all resolved, and he walks away. And can I just say that this is the first impression of Canadians that I ever had? And maybe this is super stereotypical, but are Canadians like supposed to be super nice and polite like all the time? Because this guy was like the complete opposite. Anyway, maybe it's just me because I was there firsthand and I experienced it. Or maybe this is a crazy story. I don't know. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and comment below if you've experienced anything like this before. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.